She was an 18 year and 18 day old intoxicated teenager whose boyfriend was in jail. So they went to the city city to the government plaza and that's where Mr. Seaton decided that he was going to be Mr. Big Bad city employee and What is going on everybody? Welcome to Prison Audio. My name is Mike and in this video we are checking out a Louisiana parole board hearing. Um, this is a parole board hearing that happened on September 10th, 2024 and it is for Rick Stevens. Um, so basically what happened in this case was in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, this guy was uh, the chief administrative officer um, for the mayor's office and I guess they had some kind of a uh, a big event in the town in which he took a 18 uh, year old girl back to the mayor's office um, and assaulted her um, and so he is getting 18 years in prison um, he's now up for parole and uh, yeah we're gonna see we're gonna take a look at the video and see what happens um, if the Louisiana parole board grants him parole or if they deny him parole we will find out um before we get into that i just want to show you guys a quick uh news clip of uh of the case just to give you some context and then we will get into the actual parole board hearing and then i will come back at the end of the video and uh share my thoughts on the case so let's get into it this is ksla news 12 at 5. First at five, a former Shreveport administrator has been sentenced for rape and abuse of office. You saw it here first on KSLA.com. A Caddo Parish judge sentenced Rick Seaton to 15 years in prison for forcible rape and three years for abuse of office. KSLA News tells Aaron Stevenson was in court as Seaton made his final plea for mercy. And Aaron, what did he have to say? Well, Dominique Seaton said he takes responsibilities for his actions and is sorry for hurting his family. Seaton sounded remorseful as he said, I have embarrassed myself, my family, and my city. For that, I am truly sorry. Seaton was sentenced to, to a total of 18 years, three of which he won't be eligible for parole. Because he'll be serving his sentences of 15 and three years concurrently, or at the same time, he'll be done with his sentence in 15 years. A judge convicted Seaton in January of the rape of a young girl after the 2010 Independence Bowl. Seaton raped the girl on the couch in Mayor Glover's office. We spoke to Seaton's attorney about his sentence. It certainly wasn't uh a light sentence by any stretch of the imagination. Nobody can, it was, uh, he got more than the proverbial slap on the wrist. Though we're, we're grateful the judge didn't sentence him anywhere near the maximum. maximum. The maximum for that offense is 45 years in prison. We also spoke to the prosecutor on the case. Once the conviction is obtained, the sentencing is all within the discretion of the trial court. If you were in court, you heard that the judge considered both the aggravating factors and the mitigating factors and came up with a sentence which, in my opinion, will clearly withstand uh, uh, scrutiny on appeal. Seton's attorney says they do plan on appealing the case. Live in the Alert Center, Aaron Stevenson, KSLA News 12. All right, Aaron. Rick Seaton. All right, good morning. I think we're at David Wade. Uh, we're moving to David Wade, is that correct? Yes. Hi, Warden. Would you uh, introduce everybody that's there in the, as far as staff? Uh, Michelle Dozot, Warden. Deputy Warden Brenda Acklin. Elizabeth okay. Savage, Kristen Harbor Classification. Danny Henshaw Classification. Okay. All right. Well, good morning to each of y'all and to Rick Seaton. This is your this is your day to, to talk to us. And uh, just so that you'll know, Pete Freeman is on my right and Carolyn Stapleton is on my left. And of course, you know, Steve Prater, I'm the chairman today. And so we'll go in. What The way we're going to conduct this hearing uh, is that we're going to allow you, Rick, to tell us just exactly why we should consider a parole for you. Then we will hear from the warden as far as what kind of an inmate that you have been. We will then go into two people that wish, wish to speak, and they are both your sons that wish to speak on your behalf. And then we will move into opposition, 
and we will have Kimberly Schoolcraft, the victim's mother, and Leona Fitzgerald, who is with the uh, Cato DA's office, they will speak in opposition. Then we will have we will take care of the questioning, and this is Carolyn Stapleton's. She'll be the primary question questioner on this, and then we will vote. And you'll immediately know what the decision is today. So, having said all that, we'll move directly to you, Mr. Seaton, and tell us tell us exactly why we should consider paroling you today. Thank you, sir. Um, I've, I'm a minimum custody uh, inmate, I had zero write-ups, never had a write-up in, in prison. I've served 85% of my sentence. Uh, I've taken every class that I could take. I've taught several classes here to help others. Um, I have an approved residence plan. I have an interstate compact that's been approved to another state. Um, I still have a few years left to, to be productive, and I, I look forward to, to being a productive member of society. I've been blessed with uh, family and friends that have supported me uh, in these past 13, 14 years, and, and I look forward to um, returning the favor to them and, and helping to support them in their time. Um, I've grown a lot in the last 13, 14 years. Um, I'm a more patient person. I think I'm a better man than I was. Um, I've helped a lot of people and taught a lot, and I, I look forward to continuing that growth. And I ask you for your uh, vote yes. Okay, well, we appreciate we appreciate that statement from you, and we will immediately uh, go to. Uh, we've heard. Okay, Warden, would you tell us what kind of an inmate uh, that Mr. Seaton has been? Yes, sir. Um, as he said, he's been in uh, here since 2014. He's been in general population ever since. He was made a uh, trustee in 2021, um, and he's worked in uh, several different jobs. He's currently working in the education department as an academic tutor, and he's our editor for our um, inmate magazine that was just uh, started back in 2023. Um, He's completed multiple programs. He's completed the sex offender program and the reentry program. Uh, as he said, his interstate compact has been approved uh, and he does have an employment plan. Um, he's doing well here. He hasn't had any issues here since he's been here at David Wade uh, disciplinary. And like I said, he's worked in multiple capacities. So we don't have any issues. Okay. All right, appreciate that. And now I believe we will go to those speaking in favor. Uh, first one will be Luke uh, Seaton, who is the son. Luke, are you with us? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, you, sir, go ahead, sir. And please limit your remarks to, you know, somewhere three to five minutes. You have 10 minutes total for people in favor of, so that's how long that you'll have. Yes, sir. Um, good, member, good morning, uh, members of the Pro Board. Um, I'm Rick's oldest son, and uh, I'm here today to present to express my hope to support him in my home here in Michigan, uh, should he be granted parole. Over the past several years, my dad and I have spoken on the phone almost every night, often multiple calls a night. And during these conversations, we work on the New York Times crossword puzzles together, like Wordle and the crossword and talk about life. But today I wanted to highlight um, one form of growth that you can't see in the courses that he's taken and certificates he's completed in his incarceration. Um, since his incarceration, my dad has read more books than many of us might have the chance to read in a lifetime. And in one particular phone call, he was telling me about all the romance novels that he's read and how they all have the same story and how miscommunications are the only thing that can create conflict and move the plot along. And he came to the realization that he's told me, it's, I think I've realized that the key to relationships is good communication. And for someone in their 50s to come to that conclusion shows openness and humility and potential for growth. I believe that my dad does have a lot more growing to do and pro would be the best opportunity for that. Um, he has not yet had the opportunity to prove how some of his values and expectations have has changed over the past several years. I plan to support him financially, mentally, emotionally as he reintegrates into society and to connect him with potential employers. I own a house here in Michigan uh, with a dedicated bedroom for him. Um, I've already met with his assigned parole agent through his pr approved interstate compact, and we have reentry resources in the city of Lansing for therapy, support groups, and employment. 
Um, and I, I want to thank you for your time and for considering my dad's case. I truly believe he has made the most of his time while he hasn't, while he has been in prison, and that if granted parole, he will become the best version of himself. Okay, Luke. Thank you, sir, very much. Uh, we'll hear from Isaac now. All right, I just wanted to uh, thank y'all for hearing me today. Um, yes, I just wanted to uh, say that I love my dad. Uh, I'm ready for him to be released and that I'm willing to help and support him in any way that I can. And uh, over the past years, over the multiple phone calls we've had, I've noticed his growth and his sense of purpose. But thank you. Hey, thank you, Isaac, for that. And and Rick, you're lucky to have two sons like that. And I can applaud you boys for the support that you've given your dad. Okay, we'll move into opposition now. We have two people. The first will be Kimberly Schoolcraft, who is the victim in this case, mother. Kimberly, go ahead, please. Uh, hi, can you understand me? Because my phone sometimes garbles up the communication. Well, we're understanding you. The picture is not exactly going with your voice, but as long as we can hear you, that will be fine. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I'm the victim's mother, Caitlin Winstall, and um, she's no longer with us. I don't know if you're aware of that, but she died in 2014 of a um, fatal car accident. When this uh, situation happened, well, first of all, let me just say in Rick Seaton's opening remarks, I did not once hear him say that he was sorry for his crime. I did not hear him talk about the impact to my daughter, to our family. Um, to me, that shows no remorse. Everything that I've read online that he's written in his free Rick Seaton um, newsletters talks about he's still in denial. He um, is questioning everything and he was found guilty. So it doesn't matter what he believes in his mind. I don't think he still um, has shown uh, any remorse. He totally abused his power. Um, he took my daughter into the mayor's office. And in his office, he has a little box of sex toys. So this, my daughter wasn't the first one that he's abused. And he wasn't found guilty for any, uh, nobody's come, you know, to my knowledge, I don't know what's been going on because I don't even live on that side of the country, but it just, it floors me and it really hurts my heart that in his opening remarks, all he's done is talking about himself. He's, he sounds like a narcissist. Um, yes, he's done all these programs in prison to make himself look good and has been leading in training. All of those things are that I'd like to see him humble himself and clean the toilets and be a janitor and and not uh, say how good he is. He has two sons that are still alive that he can build a life with. I don't have a daughter that, that can grow out of this and learn to forgive him. Um, I'm a Christian. I, I, I have the. Um, the peace now of her death, only knowing that she came to lo to know the Lord a few weeks before she died in her car accident. And so that's the only way I can be at peace with her death. Um, it still hurt the hurt that she had for those two years that she was on this earth. Um, and a lot of pain. Um, nothing can describe what a, a young girl goes through. When she, she, I mean, she was only 18, a few weeks when he committed this act. And I know the Bible says that in Matthew 6, that, um, that we have to forgive others of their trespasses because so that God will forgive, um, forgive us. And I, I think that my daughter by now would have forgiven him because she was a Christian. And I can't sit in judgment. The Bible also says how we, we can't sit in judgment of others. But Rick Seaton was judged for this crime. 
And the judge could have given him 45 years, but didn't. Allowed him to serve congruently his abuse of power. And I think he should serve that that time. Um, that's a blink of an eye in a lifetime on this earth. And if he's a Christian, he should get his life straight, learn how to be remorseful, um, humble himself, admit to his crime. And I have never once seen him admit to a crime. So I'm I'm definitely opposed. Um, I'm not bitter in my heart. I know my words sound that way, but I, I guess I'm just upset that that he can't uh, bring himself to humility. And if he can't, then he should not be released. He has not um, learned anything while he's in jail other than how to continue to gain more power so that when he's released, he can also control other people. And that's what I have. Thank you for letting me speak. Hey, thank you. And I'm very sorry <clears throat> in the loss of your daughter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay. Uh, always... <clears throat> ah, there you go. Uh, okay, Leon Fitzgerald is the next. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? Hi, I'm good. I'm sorry. I thought I was going last. <clears throat> well, I think you are last. Oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry. All right, can can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, I'm Leon Fitzgerald. I'm the director of the Victim Assistance Program for the Caddo DA's office. And um, I actually worked on this case when it first came to our office and throughout the trial process. So... I miss school craft. It's been a long time, but I'm glad you're on today. Um, well, I I did expect to hear more from um, Mr. Seaton, but as you all know, this um, happened or started at our Independence Bowl, which y'all are probably familiar with. It's a big event in Shreveport around here and something that we're proud of locally. Um, it shows our city in on the national level in a positive way, but um, but that was not the case um, after the events in 2011 because the takeaway that year, you know, the news headline was top city official arrested for raping teen in mayor's office, and so you know, aside from the trauma that was caused to Caitlin um you know and his own family he pretty much disgraced our entire city and put a black eye on a tradition that our city plans and looks forward to year round um i'm not surprised one bit that he's been a model prisoner in fact i would have been surprised by anything different um many sex offenders are model prisoners they're they know what they're doing they're cunning and manipulative and that's what they do that's how they charm their victims and how they gain access to victims so you know of course he conforms when he has to look good um like miss schoolcraft i was very disappointed that caitlin was never mentioned in his remarks um you know, no matter what his interpretation is of what happened, she was traumatized and she's deceased now. So um, that really, you know, disappoints me that he couldn't throw out one obligatory comment about Caitlin in his remarks. Um, I've also read his written statement that he submitted to the board. I've read lots of letters from his supporters that uh, were very disheartening. I mean, I, you want to talk about Monday morning quarterbacking. I heard everybody blame from the judge to um, the victim uh, to, 
you know, everything, all the things that Caitlin did wrong. I even read some derogatory, derogatory comments about Mr. Seaton's ex-wife. I don't know what in the world she has to do with any of this other than you know, you could consider her a victim in this too. And it disturbs me if the board read all these things. Um, I mean, I trust that you can see through these letters, but, um, you know, it was just very disappointing to read how people made all this judgment about Caitlin and her past and they don't even know her. Um, one man put together a, uh, an outline, I suppose you could say, of um, referring to this event as the perfect storm and referring to Caitlin as a seductive woman, which made me laugh because she was a drunk high school senior who had been 18 years old for 18 days. I don't think she was really capable or intending to seduce anyone. She was trying to get her boyfriend out of jail. Um, you know, one supporter of Mr. Seaton's referred to a video that apparently none of the rest of us have seen that he says shows Caitlin dragging Mr. Seaton to the scene of the sex act. Well, Caitlin was about five feet tall and probably weighed 110 or 15 pounds and was intoxicated. And and Mr. Seaton is about six five. So I don't think she was dragging him anywhere. Um, everything that I read in the pre-parole, other than Caitlin's family, all makes this out to be like Mr. Seaton was the victim in this ordeal. And Mr. Seaton hasn't said or done anything to convince this office otherwise. Um, so, you know, to mention uh, Caitlin's supporters, other than her mom, who's already spoken, you know, Caitlin, I wish I could show y'all a picture. She was a beautiful young girl. Um, she was a niece, a daughter, a granddaughter, a goddaughter. Um, she could have been anybody's daughter. She was a Girl Scout growing up. She was, here she is. And that's just the way that I remember her. Um, she was attending college at the time of her death. And um, she didn't get anything out of any of this, nothing good. She got berated, she got smattered in our newspapers. Um, she got subjected to the humiliation and discomfort of a sexual assault exam. She was forced to come back to Shreveport, a place she probably would have just as soon forgotten um, to go through a trial for what? And, um, you know, what, what Caitlin's dad, Ron, wrote is heartbreaking. He just talks about the heartbreak that the family still suffers and how uh, re-traumatizing it is for him to have to go through this parole process because he does his best to put the entire ordeal behind him and not even think about Mr. Seaton. Um, you know, Caitlin did grow up in a a somewhat tumultuous environment, according to some of the family members. There was some conflict between her and her parents, but she wasn't a throwaway. She was a young girl with her entire life ahead of her. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to close. Um, you know, in Mr., I don't know if the board members read this, but in Mr. Seaton's own words, that's nice. I could do something with that. That's what Mr. Seaton commented to a deputy at the Independence Ball when a flashlight was shown on Caitlin during the altercation with her boyfriend and her and him being taken away by the police. And that's exactly what he did that we have heard nothing about. This was a gross abuse of office, whether it was consensual or not consensual. This man was one of our highest city officials. He had a job to do at the Independence Bowl. But when he said he was going to do something with that, he meant it. And that was Caitlin Winstall, the barely 18-year-old intoxicated human being from another state who was here, unfamiliar with her surroundings, no one that she knew around. And that's what he did. He swooped her up like a hawk. I know we hear the word predator in our business a lot, 
but it's never been more fitting than in this instance. He went on to the bus. The family, three year old, 43 year old family man, went on to the bus. He chose his prey. He decided that he was going to get some of that one way or another. When everyone else was telling Caitlin to stay on the bus, to go back to the hotel, and then to get, um, try to get her boyfriend out of jail. The bus driver was telling her that. Other officers on the scene were telling her that. But Mr. Seaton very deliberately got on the bus. He let her think he was a police officer. And like a child molester lures children with, please help me find my puppy, he lured her with, I can help you get your boyfriend out of jail. So what did Caitlin do? She got off the bus. She went with Mr. Seaton. He took her on a golf cart to his um, city vehicle. He took her to the city jail and she tried to get away from him then. She told people inside the city jail, she asked for a ride. She offered to pay the bondsman money to give her a ride to her hotel. She asked, how do you report the police to the police? And she even told somebody, I think that man is gonna rape me. Did she still go with Mr. Seaton? Yes, she did, because she was an 18 year and 18 day old intoxicated teenager whose boyfriend was in jail. So they went to the city city to the government plaza and that's where Mr. Seaton decided that he was going to be Mr. Big Bad city employee and he was going to take her up to his office. She he could have let her use it, two of the cell phones that he had. He could have taken her to numerous ATMs in the city of Shreveport, but he had to get her up to Government Plaza where they would be in a deserted area alone. And he could show her the view of the city and he could woo her to the mayor's couch with, have you ever seen a real mayor's office? And when that didn't go as planned because Caitlin wasn't interested and she resisted him, just like she did in the car at the city jail and like she did at the jail, she did the same thing again at Government Plaza. But he couldn't handle that. That couldn't be the case because he had handpicked her and he couldn't not get his way with that, that he had already determined he was going to do something with. Ms. So Carol, that, yes. We've got to wrap it up, please, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm, I, thank, I'm thank you. We, we've got all these. In and so it's important to hear what you have to say. We, we, uh, okay. okay. Um, so, so I just wanted to point out that she was left with a, a bleeding navel and lacerations to her vaginal area, which is not that common in sexual assaults. And the same nurse testified that they were not consistent with normal consensual sex. So that's what happened. That's what he did. That's what he meant to do. And his conviction and his sentence have been upheld. There's a lot of stuff in his paperwork about how he's still appealing. And he even alleges that something's pending at the Louisiana Supreme Court. That is everything in his case has been upheld by the higher courts. So I would just like for the board to take all of that in mind and the the lack of remorse, as Ms. Schoolcraft mentioned, his lack of interest in his victim. And just please don't add more tragedy to tragedy by rewarding Mr. Seaton's behavior. I do appreciate the board's time and the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you put on the case and for all the work that you do up there. We appreciate you very much. Okay, that's all the in favor and all the opposition and all. It's time to turn it over to Ms. Stapleton because she's the primary. Mm -hmm. So what questions do you have? Well, I'm reading the report, sir, that it says that you were highly intoxicated. And uh, different people said that they smelled a lot of alcohol on your breath the night that all that happened. Is that true? No, ma'am. I don't remember reading anything about that. And I was not intoxicated. I'd been working all day. Okay, so you weren't intoxicated on the bus or anything? No, ma'am. What about the victim? I wasn't aware. Okay, Ms. Fitzgerald was talking about that she felt like the victim was 
uh, intoxicated. Well, in the, the report that I'm reading here, it says the blood alcohol level on you was 0.10 to 0.116. And um, other people had smelled alcohol on your breath. And then if the victim was highly, uh, um, had alcohol in her and highly intoxicated, well, then they can't give consent. And so, I, I mean, I know in, in cases that I've worked, if a victim is intoxicated and there is intercourse, it becomes rape that they get charged with. So I don't know what happened with, with that. I do know that the victim called her mom and uh, the mom received text messages from her daughter to the point that she ended up filing a missing persons report looking for her daughter because her daughter was upset. So I guess you're aware of that in all police reports, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, I listened to Leon uh, talk about the uh, medical examination, and I read that in the report, so no sense going over all of that. Um, I really don't have any more questions because I, I think pretty much Leon covered it, and uh, your children are wonderful boys, obviously. And then all the courses to take, I mean, all of that has been acknowledged and your interstate compact. So I really don't have any more questions to ask. Okay. Uh, I just got, you know, more of a state question. You know, being in public service, we, and we've all been in public service. I mean, we're all victims because now we can't get people to trust us. It's hard enough to get the general public to trust us, yet you totally broke that trust with this girl. I mean, was she making moves on you? Why did you take her there? I mean, there was no reason to take her there. Uh, the question, what was your question, Mr. Freeman? Why would you take her to the mayor's office? What was your intent? Well, first I took her to city jail because she had asked me for a ride if, and, and the, on the bus that uh, they referred to earlier in that video, she asked me for a ride and to the city jail and nobody else would take her to the city jail. And so we, that's the first place we went and I let her go inside by herself and, and she talked with uh, uh, officers in there and. Why wouldn't you go in there and help her if uh, she's from another city and you're a public servant? Why didn't you go in the police station? She, she asked to go in by herself. Okay. And, I, I, and she and she begged. She wanted me to wait for her. So I mean, I waited in the car. Okay. I have no problem. I'm usually Rick. When somebody comes before us, first thing they talk about it, and quite often they're they're very emotional about it, about the harm that they have caused the victim. I've not heard anything about the victim except from the victim's mom and the DA's representative, uh, victim person in the DA's office. What, what do you think? What do you think about that? I'm, 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 I'm sorry for her loss, Ms. Barnes's or Ms. Schoolcraft's loss. I mean, I, I, I wish that her daughter was still here. At, uh, I'm sorry about that. What about the sexual assault? Some of the some of the statements that were made aren't backed up by what was in the court case. You referred to the to the, the same examination. The, the the nurse there said that it did not um, back up for sex. That it only it only referred to recent sexual activity. Um, so some of there were misstatements there as far as as alcohol. I've never seen anything about me being intoxicated. Um, and, and I didn't have any awareness that she was intoxicated. You look at videos and she's walking just fine um, and typing on her telephone. Uh, another yeah. comment there was was about the telephone. And she had two cell phones on her the entire time and a pocket knife and testified that she uh, used the restroom behind a deadbolt lock. 
Um, and, and it was never also never brought up that she claimed rape before we had sex. And I, I just. Hey, now, one thing I noticed that you kind of mischaracterized the sexual assault exam from what I read. I read there was vaginal tearing as normal or as usual in a sexual assault. Now, did I misread something? That sounds pretty, I, mean, I didn't just dream that up. That sounds contrary to what you just said. In the, in the follow-up that, uh, that the attorney did from that, he said, does that, does that mean that it's forced sex or sexual assault? And that same nurse examiner said, no. So what does it indicate? It only indicates recent sexual activity. And she had said that she had had sex twice that day. Okay, well, I'm reading that we had sex. I mean, okay, the, the vaginal tearing is not, I'm not going to get into the court or the scientific or anything, but that seemed a little strange that I'm reading one thing about vaginal tearing. But back to the other. Rick, all you've said is you're sorry that the lady, that the victim died. Even in, even in recent cases where you have in national media about somebody that has done something or been accused of something, they at least apologize for the perception. I'm sorry that this young lady thought that this wasn't consensual. I'm sorry that she might have gotten that impression, but it was concerned. I'm sorry that she went through this. I'm sorry that, but there's never been any mention about your remorse for that. Am, am, am I mistaken? I mean, no. where, where I, is I, that? I mean, I, like you said, I do apologize that there was any of that negative perception um, I did make mistakes that night. There's no doubt about that. I, I committed adultery and that was wrong. I had sex in the workplace and, and that was wrong. Um, I was out, messed around, and I should have been at home with my family. And, and that was wrong. Um, so I definitely made mistakes that evening. Thank you. No ready to vote? Yeah, I do have to correct one thing. I'm sorry. It does say here the bench trial of Richard Seaton was that KW's blood level was likely between 0 0.10 and 0 0.16 grams percent at the time of the sexual assault between 8 and 9 p.m. And so like there again, um, when we have a victim who is highly intoxicated, a lot of times that's, that's dealt with as a rape because they can't give consent. So I did see that. So I did want to correct that though. And nothing else. Okay. Any other, no questions. We're ready to vote. Ms. Stapleton, you lead the charge. Okay. My vote today is to deny based upon um, um, the, the abuse of power, just like you were charged. And um, I believe it was forcible rape. Uh, my vote is also to deny, uh, you've done great in prison, but the bottom line is you got a, a big break with a 15 year sentence. Um, it really disturbs me that, uh, you use the position of power to get what you wanted from this young lady and, uh, due to victim opposition and law enforcement opposition, my vote is to deny. Okay, my vote also, it doesn't matter because it needs to be unanimous, so your your parole is denied. My vote, Rick, is to deny also. Uh, I, when you have another hearing, if you choose to get one, I, I think you you got to somehow acknowledge what this little girl went through. This hearing's over, denied. All right, guys, there it is. That's the, uh, another Louisiana Parole Board hearing. Um, 
and this one was denied. Um, so what do you think about this? Uh, do you think they made the right choice? Do you think he should be granted parole? Do you think he not sh he shouldn't be granted parole? And uh, what, do, what do you think about this sentence? Um, 15 years for uh, those charges seems pretty lenient. Um, so, yeah, maybe he should just ride out his time and not worry about parole. Um, because, yeah, at 15 years, it seems pretty lenient to me, but... I don't know. Let me let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, um, the easiest way for you guys to help this channel grow would be to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, share fr share it uh, with your friends if you're uh, if you like this type of content. So we will see you on the next one.